Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 23. And Sarah was a hundred and seven and twenty years old, a hundred and twenty-seven years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. Now she's the only woman mentioned in the Bible that has a, a year, an age associated with death. The only woman. She died in Kircha Arbor, the same as Hebron, in the land of Cana. So she's in the land. She dies in the land. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. He loved her and missed her. Death. And Abraham stood up from before his dead. And he got up, leaves Sarah, and spank unto the sons of Heth. Now Heth are of the Canaanites, of the Hittites. So the children of Ham are in the land. I am a stranger. It's not his land yet. No God's promise to it. And a sojourner, which means temporary builder, temp temporary dwelling. I'm not here to stay. With you. Give me a possession of a burying place. The first time this shows up. A place for a dead. Burying place. You never read about Adam bearing Eve or Eve bearing Adam and you know all the ch of chapter 5 this is the first time that I may bury my dead out of my sight I don't want the grave around I bring back terrible memories she deserves a burial it's in the land that God said is my land and the children of Heb answered Abraham, saying unto him. So he comes to the children of Heb and says, Listen, I want a burying place. That's why I'm here. Hear us, my Lord. Now that's a title of respect. They're not calling him Lord God. Small L. Thou art a mighty prince among us. Reputation of Abraham. In the choice of our sepulchres, bury thy dead. Choose our graveyards. Choose any graveyard you want. None of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, our graveyard, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. Abraham stood up and bowed himself. That's like we shake hands. Oriental custom. Bowed himself to the people of the land even to the children of hell. And he communed and talked with them, with them saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and tweet for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar, one particular man. They offered our graveyards. Abraham says no. Why? Because they're worshiping vain gods. Abraham does not want to be associated with the heathen and God worship. A Christian has no business being buried in a Roman Catholic cemetery. That's not your land. Though they've got the principal market of them all, but you probably can find somewhere, even if it's out of your sight, 
a graveyard that is not associated with other gods. I think a lot of churches today should go back to the custom of having a piece of land for the people of their church to bury. I know the laws and that make it hard, but what is one of the characteristics of being a member of a church? You used to have church, church, I forget what, graveyard was the one of a church, a cemetery was outside of something like that. But you look up those definitions, one of them meant it's right by the church. Abraham stood up, bowed himself to the people in the land, even the children have. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind, your idea, your thought, that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and treat me to Ephron, one particular man, and to make sure the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave, the cave, the cave. He wants the cave of Machabeth. Now, the previous cave that we saw was when Lot and his two daughters go run and hide from the judgment of God. The next cave we see is for burying place. Which he had. Which is in the end of his field. So, Ephron has a field. At the end of this field, there's a cave. And as much money as is worth he shall give me for a possession of the buying place amongst you. Whatever that cave is worth, whatever the value of that cave, I'll buy it. David runs into this when he's dealing with the Jebusites over a piece of land. Oh, we'll give it to you. Here's the oxen. Here's... No, no. I am not going to do anything for God without a purchase price, without a title deed. Because that title deed, that today that the United Nations says is not Israel, David has recorded in two places of the Bible that he bought that land. He bought it from the owner, the threshing floor, where the temple will sit. David has, according to the King James 1611 Bible, he has rights to that land. Give it to me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. And Ephraim dwelt among the children of Heb. And Ephraim the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heb. Now the pop, this it's not saying, but this is probably taking place at the city gate where they judge. Abraham's a remarkable man. He knows the customs. He knows that this is a land deal. You find this throughout the Bible. He would call a bunch of people to the city gate. They would bring a bunch of noblemen for witnesses. That this is done in chapter 4 of Ruth. Boaz brings some men says, I have a business deal right now. I need witnesses. Abraham is seeking out to purchase a piece of property. And he's doing it at the city or town hall, which is the gate. Lot was a judge, the Bible tells us, in the gate of Sodom. So he's got witnesses around him. And the children of Heaven. Even all that went in at the gate of his city, saying. So these are people that know the uh, that knows uh, Ephron, and they know the Hethites. They know the Hittites. They are witnesses. Nay, my lord, and this is Ephron. Hear me. The field. Abraham wanted the cave. Ephraim says, The field and the cave give I thee. And the cave that is there. Listen, I'm not even going to give you the, the cave. I'll give you. I'll give it to you free. This, this is yours. Before all the people, before the judges. The cave that there's therein, I give it to thee. In the presence of the sons of my people, people witnessing the event, give I it to thee, bury thy dead. I'll give it to you free. Esau and Jacob is going to have this kind of conversation. Well, here, take these presents. No, I don't want them. Here, will you take them? No, I don't need them. I got enough. Come on, brother. Please take it. No, I'm not going to take it. Take it. Okay. David, like I said, with the Jebusite. Here, it's yours. No, I'm not going to buy unless I pay the price. And David paid the price. 
the Oriental customs is they are in no hurry to do anything. And Americans need to realize when you're dealing with the Japanese or the Chinese, if you're going to sit down to a business meeting, they're going to want to have tea. They're going to want to have a meal. They want to know about you, your family. They're going to want to talk. They're going to be very, very slow to get the business. And that angers, that custom of the, of the Chinese and Japanese, Angers Americans. Americans want, hey, I want, here's the check. I want to buy it. I want to own it. The Oriental people, I mean, the Middle Eastern people, they're, they're like, I'll give it to you. You want it? I'll give it to you. It's yours. You don't need to give me no money. But as for Abraham here in this chapter, and as for David, with the 34 of Onat, if there's no money given, if there's no price, if there's no title deed recorded, it's not your property. God told Jeremiah, he's in prison. Listen, I think your uncle's going to come. He's going to seal. He's going to sign. We're going to call the people of the, of the judges. You're going to buy that property from him. And I think later on, I think when Jeremiah gets in the land when the Lord Jesus Christ is king, I think that title deed is going to come back and Jeremiah's going to hey, you bought it. Here's the paper. Here's the evidence. David, this does not belong to the world. This does not belong to the United Nations. It don't belong to the, to the Philistines. It belongs to you. Here's your title deed. Here's a piece of property. Abraham, this is yours. You purchased it rightly. I give it thee. And the cave that there ain't all Abraham wanted was the king. I mean the cave. This guy is offering everything. Abraham's not going to live here. He doesn't, I don't believe he ever comes back, the Bible says. He wants a resting place for the body of his wife. This guy says, hey, not only the cave, take the field. And Abram bowed down, again, it's the Oriental custom, himself before the people of the land. So, you know, it's respect. I heard what you said. And he spanked unto Ephraim in the audience of the people of the land. Saying, but if thou will give it, you're going to give it to me? I, I acknowledge you're going to give it to me. I pray thee, hear me. I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead dead. I'll pay you. I heard you say you're going to give it to me free. But I am willing to buy it for money. And Ephraim answered, Abraham saying unto him, My Lord. Hearken unto me. Now this is where the this is where the business goes slow. Ephraim is looking to sell his land, but he's not going to come right out with a price tag. Abraham is looking to buy a piece of property, but he's not going to say how much he's going to pay. So Ephraim answered Abraham saying, "My Lord, hearken unto me. The land is worth four hundred. Now pay attention to number four hundred in the Bible." Yeah, that's an interesting number. Shekels of silver. What is that betwixt? The betwixt is between two things. There's Ephraim and there's Abraham. What's between them? Betwixt me and thee. Bury therefore thy dead. Listen, it's four hundred dollars. Well, I mean four hundred shekels of silver. Like, will you just bury your dead? That's how much it's worth, but I Abraham hearkened unto Ephraim. And Abraham weighed Ephraim the silver that he had named in the audience of the sons of Hef 400 shekels of silver current or currency comes from the King James 611 Bible. Money with the merchant. Men, we're trying to make a deal with Ephraim here. He said that land was 400, 400 shekels of silver. And however they weighed it out. Is this 400 shekels of silver? Yes, Abraham, 400 shekels of silver. Now that is the price that was named by Ephraim. I'm going to give him 400 shekels of silver. And what we don't see in this chapter, which is which is the standard, is they would make out uh, 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 papers like they do today. They'll make out a deed, a title, record that on this date with these witnesses that Ephraim, $400 received from Abraham. Abraham will get this field and get this cave. 
And God is a great record keeper. Here it is. It says 1860 B.C. God has recorded the title deed. Here it is. Now, do you believe the King James 1611 Bible is the Word of God? Without any shadow of doubt, I do. Do you realize what God has recorded by the Holy Spirit of title deeds in the Bible? Abraham, Jeremiah, and David. And I don't know if there's any others. But these are pieces of property. Abraham, it's in the land. David, it's in the land. Jeremiah, it's in the land. Who do you think that land belongs to? Who three? Who are those three men? They're Jews. What is the land? It's Jewish land. What has God recorded in His Holy Word? I mean, you think about the Holy Word of God, it records title deeds. What other holy book that they would call inspired book by their gods would do such thing as record? And Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. This purchase of Abraham, David, and Jeremiah are recorded for all eternity. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. And yet here we'll be able to go to Genesis 24. We'll be able to go read about David and Jeremiah. I, I don't know the chapters. Forgive me. And that will be recorded for all eternity. The old temple mount where Solomon built the temple was destroyed. Where Ezra built the temple it was and it was destroyed. Where Jesus Christ walked on that temple spot. It was a threshing floor. It was purchased by David by said amount of money. It belongs to the Jews. And if God wanted to, which he's not going to, he could show up in any United Nations meeting and say, Here boys, it says in my word of God, it's theirs. It's remarkable. He named the audience of the sons of Heth 400 shekels of silver. Current currency. And people ever wonder where the words come from? Bible. Money with the merchant. So whatever that current state of silver was, Abraham paid his act. And the field of Ephron, the field of Ephron, that's the property, which was in Mechpelah, which was before memory, 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 the field describing the property, and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field. Tell you, there are trees here. It's where the land is located. There's a cave there. They were all the borders round about were made sure. The title deed has now been signed over with the trees, with the cave, with the field, been signed over to, to Abraham. Unto Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth, witnesses, before all that went in. At the gate of the city where judgment is going on. This is the courtroom. This is witnesses of a city hall. And after this. After this has been signed, sealed, and delivered. Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Mechpelah. Before memory. The same as Hebron. So remember now when we go to Hebron. We hear Hebron in the Bible later on. This is where, this is where Abraham bought a piece of property. In the land of Canaan, which is the land of Israel. Now, with 23 verse 2, Sarah died in Kirchim Arbor, the same as Eber, in the land of Canaan. We also have the field of Machpelah and Hebron. This place has three names. There are several places in the Bible. The, the, oh, which sea is it? The Sea of Chernobyl. Which I forget. It's got three names. And the field. We're going back to that property again. And the cave that is therein. Were made sure. Signed, sealed by the government of this town. Unto Abraham for possession of a burying place. By the sons of hell. This is Abraham's land. He paid for it. And there's documentation. It wouldn't be great one day if all these documents show up one day. 
It'd be interesting. Well, why don't archaeologists look for this stuff? Because it would make the United Nations upset. <laughs>